Welcome to yet another video session. In this session we will see how to master the art of storytelling. What makes a story a good story? Okay, so first of all we will see what is storytelling? What is the importance of storytelling? What makes an excellent storytelling? Then we will see the different type of storytelling, the art of storytelling and what are the different techniques which you should know. Okay, so without wasting time, let's get started. Storytelling is a powerful tool. Storytelling is an interactive form of art that involves words and actions to disclose the images and elements of a story. Storytelling is a process of weaving the language. Storytelling is both an art and science. Now, the storytelling can be during bedtime or while traveling or while spending time with your children or it can be while eating. If you find your students low in confidence in certain areas then instead of just teaching the chapter you can use the art of storytelling that will make them gain confidence you can find stories to inspire the people to tell your children in such a way that the children believes in your stories and can adapt from the strategies and its ideology now what are the different steps that you need to keep in your mind while delivering the story so first is know your audience and and how to deliver your message accordingly so for example if you are telling a story to children you might use simple words and colorful illustrations next point to remember is that use a clear structure with a beginning middle and end so for example you can start with a hook that grabs the attention of the listeners then introduce the main characters and conflict and then in the end you can resolve the conflict and then you can end with a lesson or take away the next point is you can add sensory details and emotions to create vivid images so for example you can describe how the setting looks sound smell feels and taste and how the characters feels and react to the events try to use dialogues metaphors and anecdotes to make your story more engaging for example you can use dialogue to show the personality and voice of the characters metaphors to compare the abstract concept and anecdotes to share personal or humorous experience that relate to the story practice how you deliver your story and get feedback from others for example you can rehearse your story in front of a mirror or with a friend you can record yourself and listen to how you sound you can ask for criticism and you can take criticism in a positive way you can take suggestions from others who have heard your story so these are the different techniques which you can follow to master the art of storytelling next let us see what are the characteristics of a good story so a good friendly story keeps the reader engaged and curious about what will happen next so they will always be excited that what will happen next it will keep the reader's interest engaged and add to their knowledge good stories are universal in nature such that they can appeal to all the readers and touch their emotions and include the experiences that most people share good stories must be properly organized it must have a clear structure that helps you to deliver it to the main point so that the audience can absorb it great stories leaves an impression on the reader whether it can be an inspirational story or controversy or comedy now every story has characters so every story has one character that is a protagonist so this main character is very important it serves as a connection between the storyteller and the audience your audience will be more inclined towards you so in the end i would like to conclude that the stories can exhibit joy the joy comes not just from the story but also from connecting with others by sharing that story now let us see how we can tell stories using data so first of all let us see what is data raw facts or figures is called data data is not information information is not knowledge knowledge is not understanding understanding is not wisdom this is a powerful quote given by gary data is very useful for any particular organization or company to take any decision for example while choosing a college for getting admission we first check whether that particular college or institute is suitable 
we go through the placement data of previous years of that college educational qualification and experience of faculty members then we also check the fees and the facilities which they are providing and on the basis of that we take the decision whether to take admission in that college or not similarly the government collect and record data about the population through a process called census census data contain valuable information which are helpful in planning and formulating policies banks maintain data about the customers their account details transactions credit debit so we can say that data is a collection of characters numbers and other symbols that represent values of some situations or variables data is a plural term and the singular term that is called datum using computers data are stored in electronic forms data processing is done which becomes faster and easier as compared to manual data processing which is done by people ICT information and communication technology led by computer mobile and internet have resulted in a large volume of data some other examples of data are personal details like name age gender contact details which is a very common example then all the transactions day to day transactions to transfer money from one account to another account online shopping to book tickets railways airlines etc whether it is online or offline images graphics animations audio video documents and web pages then online messaging social media signal which is generated what is the importance of data data is very helpful and useful for taking any decision large amount of data is processed by computer suppose we want to withdraw money from atm the bank needs to debit the withdrawn amount from the linked account company customer ki demands ko identify karti hai jo bhi wo feedback dete hain aur uske basis pe wo changes karte hain in their products and services besides business some other scenarios where the data are stored and analyzed for making decision first electronic voting machine used for recording the votes scientists record data while doing experiments pharmaceutical companies record data while trying out a new medicine libraries maintain data about books search engine gives us result on the basis of large volume of data available across the internet weather alerts are generated by analyzing the data now we will study the different type of data data is categorized into two broad categories first is structured data and the second is unstructured data so we will study them one by one what is structured data structured data is the data data which is ordered in a particular order and which can be organized and can be recorded in a well defined format that is called structured data structured data is usually stored in computer in a tabular form in the form of rows and columns for example kitchen items in a shop so there are different kitchen items available and the unit price the price of each kitchen item is given and we can also calculate the discount if a shopkeeper wants to sell the item then the number of items which are available which are in the stock next look at this table it shows more example of structured data attributes maintained for different activities book at a shop so the different data fields or parameters or attributes are book title author name price of the book year of publication similarly if you want to deposit the fees in a school different parameters are student name class roll number fees amount deposit date next is the amount withdrawn from atm so the different attributes are account holder name account number type of account day of withdrawal amount withdrawn atm id next topic is unstructured data unstructured data which is not in a particular order there is no fixed pattern for example a newspaper contains different type of news so a newspaper publishes news on daily basis sometimes there is there are three images of different sizes in a page sometimes there is only one big image 
sometimes they publish advertisements more advertisements it is in a random order and not in a fixed order example of unstructured data include web pages consisting of text as well as multimedia images graphics audio video other examples are business reports books social media messages so they are not in a particular order and they are not well defined different parts of email such as subject recipient main body attachment etc image file as image size is in k it can be in kb kilobyte it can be in megabyte image type can be jpeg jpeg png image can be of different re resolution etc next what are the different steps in statistics we will study about data collection data collection means to collect or gather, gather data identifying the data or collecting from appropriate sources example sales data available with the shopkeeper next we can store the data in excel file or in access file in a tabular form or csv file comma separated value file shopping malls are collecting data about the items which are being purchased by the people similarly the shop owners may decide to display bed sheets organizations like world bank international monetary fund imf are collecting data related to various economic parameters for making economic forecast next step is data storage to store the data data storage is a process of storing data on storage devices so that the data can be retrieved later common examples are hard disk ssd solid state drive cd dvd pen drive memory card etc we store data like images documents audio video as files in our computer school hospital data are stored in data files we can also store data special software through dbms database management system next step is data processing data processing means to process the data to obtain useful information raw facts or figures is called data which is not useful we process the data to convert it into a useful format so the process form of data is called information we collect the input from different sources and then we process the data and in the output we get the information which is presented in the form of reports or the different results obtained you can look at this figure which shows a website handling online filling of students details for competitive examination and generating admit card a bank handling withdrawals of cash through atms issue of train tickets i hope you find this video useful if you have any suggestion or queries then you can ask in the comment box for more interesting videos like this please like share and subscribe to this channel